Uh, tip number one was to limit the number of columns returned. Uh, next, we talked about creating a primary key on essentially any table that you create. Tip number three was to create an index on the columns that are being used in the where clause and also to limit the number of rows by using top. Uh, tip number five is when working with joins, uh, you need to have an index on the columns in the join and the where clause. And uh, next we looked at uh, when using multiple columns in where or order by, you need to create a compound index and pay attention to the order of the index. Tip number seven was if you're trying to get unique values, you should be using group by instead of distinct. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start looking at today's tip. We in fact started looking at it in the last video but ran out of time. This is to use, uh, the tip is to use an exist clause instead of in when uh, working with subqueries. And these two are typically used when you are trying to find uh, an information from a table that um, sort of depends on another table. So here our example is to get everything from a document type table which uh, if you remember is a reference table. But we only want those records where the doc type uh, matches the doc type in this big table and also where the flag is one. So if, if, uh, if you want to see the data in document data, uh, I do have a query here. Um, this is essentially the transactional table. I did add some more records to this. So our queries uh, are gonna run a little longer. Uh, but let's go ahead and uh, look at this example first. I'm going to go ahead and bring this out here. Uh, make sure query execution is uh, turned on or the query execution plan is turned on and I will go ahead and run this. In addition to this I'm also running a profiler on the side so we will be uh, taking a look at those later. Looks like it returned 90 rows. No, if I go to the execution plan, right click on it, I'm getting 11.3 for the estimated subquery cost. So I will go ahead and write that down here. I think I added more rows, so this number is coming different. And as far as my logical reads, I'm getting uh, 11,401 and 656. So 656 here and 11 for the 11401. So this was using the uh, in clause. Next, I'm going to go ahead and copy the one from exists. It should return the same data, but we should definitely notice a difference in the um, in the way the uh, query engine processes this information. So again, we got 90 rows. Uh, go to the execution plan, 11.3. Uh, so let's write that down, which is looks like it's about the same here. So the CPU is actually a little bit less. So it took about uh, about one second less using the exist clause. Uh, and, and the reason for that is that exist actually uh, checks for uh, essentially you know the record being there whereas in clause is really more like a uh, Search search parameter. So that's our tip number eight. Uh, tip number nine is to use uh, set no count on in T SQL code or stored procedures. So this basically what this does is anytime when you're working with SQL Server, you'll notice that it at the end it'll say something like hundred rows returned or zero rows returned. Essentially, it's sending the information back to the client. So what this one does is it turns off those messages so a SQL does not have to uh, essentially notify the client. 
Now for this test we are going to run two procedures. One is with set no count on and uh, one is with uh, set no count off and we will check the results in profiler. Also we are using the adventure works database for this so I will uh, essentially uh, look at these procedures real quick and I will also we are running this trace um, I do cover the basics about traces in another video so I would recommend watching this I do believe it is on YouTube also so let's look at this uh, procedure I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the procedure and click on modify and uh, you will notice that this is the main option that is set here uh, as far as in the main code I'm uh, looping through these records I'm not going to explain the whole thing but uh, I'm using a while loop to uh, drop a table and then copy uh, data from sales customer into this table and then I am doing three updates so that's all I have in the code the main difference is that for this uh, procedure I have the option turned on Um, I want to make sure that uh, we haven't. I'm going to clear this trace. Go back in here and copy this code. Come out here. And then just execute it. And now, if we switch back to our uh, trace. Uh, it's definitely going to be activity but I'm just going to look at the information at the end of uh, the procedure it's essentially going through the loop uh, I think 20 times to generate this uh, information and you'll notice as the events are happening in profiler uh, you're getting some information down here so I just ran this uh, here's the line where it says the procedure was ran and here is what I'm gonna get these numbers so for the CPU it's 14,071 so let me come back here right uh, 14,000 71 for CPU and for duration which is essentially the amount of time it took it's 32825 now for the other procedure we can uh, take a look at this again uh, notice that right now for this one I don't have any option uh, turned on here and the code looks pretty much the same so I will just copy this code, this part, move it up here. And before I do that, I will clear the trace again so that we have a clean slate. And I will go ahead and run this. Looks like the query is executing. I will go back to my profiler. And as the events happen in profiler, this information gets updated. Uh, and I have uh, re reached the end of my processing. So I will come here now for the CPU. It, this one says it's 13,213. Uh, Then for duration is 21, 446, and notice here's where it says that we executed that procedure. So 21, 446. So notice uh, this one compared to this one. Uh, CPU, there is a little bit improvement, but notice a uh, big difference on the duration.